Hello, welcome to Tech Dive AV Club. We're in Movie Studio 17 Platinum. I'm Adam, and we're gonna do some quick tips. So using the video trimmer gives you a couple of advantages when adding media to your project. Uh, but first off, we're going to have to add it. So a lot of times with your default view, you do not have the trimmer, and that's okay. Uh, you can just go to your window, select trimmer, and then boom, you have your trimmer. You can use the control key to grab it and move it, undock it, or dock it to your windows there and so uh, when you add something to your trimmer as opposed to your preview so here's my trimmer there's my video preview so this is what we're talking about here the trimmer uh, when you add something to the trimmer so I got some just random videos here uh, if I add something to the trimmer itself I can look at it without it adding to my project media so it's a great way to kind of be like do I even need this clip and then you can kind of look through it skim through it real fast decide if you want it. if you don't want it you just hit this X here never adds to your project now you don't have clutter to worry about cleaning up but if you do decide to add something to your project what you can do is you can just hit add the timeline and it will also add it to your project or maybe you want to create a sub clip and I have this covered in my uh, tutorial as well but maybe you just want a piece of it you can go down here to the hamburger menu hit uh, create sub clip it'll name it whatever you want it to name it and then now you have both the parent clip and the sub clip that you can add to your timeline and there you go. This is in the picture in picture track, so that's why it was small. So as you're adding different fonts, when you go to your media generator and titles and text, there's a few different things about fonts that you might not know. And uh, one of these things is that it's really easy to swap through your different fonts as you're uh, just highlight them. You can make it whatever size you want first highlight it and then select your font up here and then just immediately start using the arrow key and you can very quickly just find out if you're gonna select the font that you want uh, without having to manually click 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 over and over again so this is usually how I thumb through fonts really fast so if you like want a font change in the middle of it or something uh, a lot of times I do have a whole nother mentality for adding text and a lot of people have I highly recommend you check out my uh, you're doing text wrong video but uh, if you do want to just change the text within the same window here all you have to do is hit this plus sign now you can animate the text so if your sync cursor to media is selected you can create a new keyframe and then change the font and then change the font again later down the line uh, and you can even add things like change font or change <laughs> that's actually changing the lettering blah and then so now when we watch it back you'll see if you're changing the content you'll need to have this arrow uh, this animation for the content selected also uh, you might think but I want to keep doing that but it repeats after 10 seconds I have this little knot showing me that it's repeating and I don't want the keyframes to repeat I want to keep going if that's the case you can come up here to the duration with the duration um, you can easily change the duration to anything you want if you make it 30 seconds boom that notch is gone now you have 30 seconds before it repeats and you can change that quickly uh, this is hours minutes seconds and frames uh, in your timeline uh, standard timeline format here so if I'm trying to motion track something, a lot of times um, you have a video and maybe you want to motion track that fence. You want to make it look like the text is static, but the camera is moving. Uh, to do that in Movie Studio, uh, you could probably get a good motion track off this fence post right here because it's got a very high contrast. But if you had a situation where you didn't have good at contrast, you can go to Video Effect and go to your Unsharp Mask very handy tool for a lot of reasons uh, grab the light version and boom now it's just a bit sharper you might want this look you might not want this look because it gets rid of the background haze and things like that uh, it makes everything just have this overall sharper appearance and that's great for motion tracking so now if you go to your Bezier masking and you hit control shift Q let's go ahead and copy this track up here uh, and then let's get rid of the Bezier masking on the bottom and then let's create a, with the Bezier mask on top if you want to know more about motion tracking I highly recommend you check out my motion tracking video for movie studio 17 platinum I go to the tracking tab here 
start at the beginning, make this a smaller, kind of focus more in on that fence post to give it something really uh, particular to grab, and then we can go right from the beginning, hit start, and it will write keyframes down here uh, to motion track. Again, I highly suggest you checking out my motion dragon tutorial for more information about that, but the unsharp mask can give you more accurate uh, motion tracking. Now we have the text, and look at that. It's hanging with the fence pretty well. There was a bad frame in there, but... Uh... Yeah, so if you're having trouble with motion, motion tracking, try adding the uh, unsharp mask before the Bezier mask. If you have a project that's getting absurdly long and you would like to uh, be able to jump from one section to another, if you hit the M key, it'll make a marker on your tech, uh, on, on your timeline. You can name it whatever you want, like uh, stuff. And then uh, later, uh, whatever the number is of that marker, you can hit it on your keyboard. So if I hit one, I will jump to the marker wherever it is on my timeline instantly. So that's a great way to jump around your timeline fast in a larger project. Uh, let's say you start editing and you just get lots and lots of little gaps in your project and you don't like those gaps. Uh, if you don't know about Auto Ripple, I highly recommend you check out that tutorial. It is super necessary to know what that is. Uh, but you, what you can do too is just right click and hit close gaps and it will close all the gaps on that track. Uh, we can do it. Uh, there is no gaps here, but if you have a bunch of gaps of something on a singular track, like I'm going to try and reproduce it by putting more things on the track. Okay, so now right click again, close gaps. You can see, boom, it puts everything together snugly. It doesn't put everything at the beginning, it just moves everything to the first event and then it'll close all the gaps between everything on that track afterwards. So those are some tips that I've been getting, uh, kind of collecting over time making these tutorials. So like if this video helped you out, subscribe if you're looking for more videos like this one. There are tons of helpful links in the description. Uh, I got lots more Movie Studio tutorials and Vegas Creative Software tutorials on the way. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.